Hey guys, so we are staying at Fort Wilderness this weekend, so we're going to be giving you a review of the cabins. Uh, we have stayed in the cabins before, but it's been about three or four years. Yeah, I think four years. It's been a good years. long time. So we are excited to go and stay in them again. Also, we are bringing our, do our dog Walt with us, so it's going to be something new for us as well. But we thought we would do kind of a little more of like an active review because typically we kind of film it and then we'll sit down at home. So we're going to try to do it kind of all in the room this time, which I think would be a lot of fun. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the cabin. So when you're staying with a pet, they actually give you this uh, bag and they give you like basically different pet essentials so you get a little, well it's actually a huge doggy bowl for our little guy and then a little pet mat. It's actually, it's a nice mat, it's like yeah. a mouse pad. Yeah. They give you a room occupied, a specific pet one so they don't come in here uh, because you can't get housekeeping. <laughs> when you have a pet. Uh, not that we would have gotten it anyways. And then they give you a little map here with basically where the dog park is. Uh, because this whole wilderness is a dog relief area. <laughs> <laughs> and there's rules and stuff on the back, I think. Yep. And here you can see the different pet policies. Cool, cool. Oh, policies. It could be because it's for all rooms. Our, uh, the website says four hours. And it says seven. Or at least what I read said four hours. Oh, that is interesting. You also get this. You didn't oh, yeah. They give you like a little, uh, <laughs> so it's like little a collar tag. Collar tag and then some uh, dog poopy bags. <laughs> nice. It's like a nice little kit they give you. All right guys, so taking a look around the room, we've actually been here for two nights now. Uh, of course the cabins, uh, they sleep six. You have the pull out in the living room, the uh, full size bed, and then the two twin bunk beds there, or the single twin bunk bed. But we really like the rooms. Uh, the bed is a little bit weird being against the wall. So one of you are like sleeping against the wall sometimes. 
But other than that, like the living area, I think is kind of the highlight of it yeah. for us. Yeah. Uh, just having that extra space out there, the couch and the uh, chair, and then you get a full dining room table. And we did utilize the kitchen as well. Mm -hmm. The microwave is a... Convection oven. Yep. How did that work for you? Because you used it twice now. Yeah, it, it works. Um, it's definitely like a little... I'm not used to convection ovens and timing and like kind of just using them in general, but it works fine. It's just, I think it takes a little longer than like a standard oven. I could be wrong. I don't know, but it is really good. The room doesn't have much like bakeware. It doesn't have like a pan or anything like that. So I've been using aluminum foil to kind of line everything, but it works. So it's good. It's definitely the kitchen supply setup is not as much as you would get in like a DVC kitchen hmm. so I would over prepare as far as bringing things with you but now we're just gonna walk around show you guys the resort a little bit uh, <laughs> go by some of the pool areas we're just kind of doing a little walk we'll go through some of the different amenities available at the resort So we are at the main pool area, kind of in the center of Fort Wilderness. Uh, you can see the little like swimming hole for the little kids. And back there, there is like an arcade and a drink station. Uh, we'll go see if we can slide back there. Now this pool does not open until 10 a.m. It's ours, I think, are 10 to 11. Uh, but this is gonna be your main pool featuring the slide and everything. It is the largest pool. There is a second pool on site which is actually over by the cabins. Nice thing about that pool is that one actually opens at 7 a.m., but that one is not a guarded pool, which I believe is why. So we could actually go to that pool like right now if we wanted to. Over right across from the pool, there is also a playground. Uh, pretty simple, but is a fenced in area there. Uh, there's also bike racks because it is a campground. Lots of people bring their bikes. You can also rent them. But nice little playground. There is also volleyball. There's also another set of volleyball courts uh, kind of on the way we just came to get back to our cabin. And there's been, there's usually people playing in at least one of these. And then over here, there is also two tennis courts and then a picnic pavilion with some of the uh, kind of standard charcoal grills you'll find around the premises. at the entrances to all the loops they do have bus stations there is an internal uh, bus route uh, there's actually three different routes that run I think most of them night right they run pretty late and start pretty early I'm not a hundred percent sure what time they may stop at I know they, they really do it based on like park hours and event hours so like if there's a uh, Mickey's Not So Scary goes until 1 or 2 a.m. Like the internal buses are going to run past that. And then like a run Disney event, the internal buses start running early for runners. So There is Tetherball over in this loop. We actually stayed at the that spot where that little camper is one time. Fun fact for you, we do occasionally enjoy tent camping as well. So over here on this end, there is a dog park. It's got two kind of separate areas there. And then next to that, there is also another playground. Uh, we're kind of on like the far path. We're basically completely opposite of where we are from our cabin, um, but it is kind of closer to the different campsite areas. So we are all the way back by the marina in the area known as the settlement. Uh, the building over there is Hoopty Doo Trails End. Uh, they do Trails End technically also has like a quick service area as well. And there is a bar and a um, arcade over in that building over there. You see we have another playground over on this side. And then over here is the uh, larger of the two gift shops. Uh, this one is a little bit more like Disney centric. It still has plenty of camping stuff, but the other one in the center is, I think, is a little more geared towards your camping essentials while still definitely has plenty of Disney merchandise. And the other one also opens earlier and stays open later than this one. Yep. 
right behind that gift shop here. Uh, this is where like some of the premium campsites and cabins are. It's kind of interesting as they have a mix of both in this loop here. Um, but that's kind of the premium area because you are like a hundred yards away. You can see the boat kind of out there in the distance uh, taking people to Magic Kingdom. You can also go to the beach and they pipe in the music for fireworks. We were going to try to do that last night, but it was raining. So this one does not open until 11 now. I'm almost positive it used to open at 10. So we'll walk down towards the marina. You can see the dock area. Uh, this is all parking for people who are pretty much in Magic Kingdom or one of the monorail resort areas right now. Uh, they have parking areas for your golf carts here. Over there they do have food trucks. I have noticed, uh, we haven't been here in a little while, but they have had more food trucks like kind of generally all over. There was an ice cream one over in the center by the main pool area that we saw earlier. That was there yesterday. And then we didn't pass by on the other side, there's usually like a barbecue one. And they will also, it's over by the uh, like campfire and movie area. Up at the marina area now, you see there's a sitting area over on this side. Over there, that's for boat rentals. It doesn't look like there's anything there. This used to be way more grown out, but you can see this black fencing. That's where that new uh, reflection resort was supposed to go. And it is now canceled. So there's basically just a big like, empty lot over on that side now, which is kind of unfortunate. So this is the one that was actually over in the center before. See, it's kind of standard kind of barbecue-y stuff. Over here, uh, this is where Trails End is and also where they do hoop de doo uh, We love Trails End. We would highly recommend it. We haven't been there, though, in a little bit over a year. Yeah, breakfast is just okay, but lunch and dinner is good. Yeah. So over here is the new Tricircle D Ranch. Uh, they used to have a building right across the street here, but that was torn down in preparation for the hotel that is now defunct. Uh, so this is actually all pretty much brand new, so we haven't seen like any of it. But you can, in the past there was like a little museum in here, and you could go and see like all the different horses and what their jobs are on property. So we'll go see if that is uh, open. for pony rides over here. You have Bandit, Benji, and Vader. Looks like one of them must be at work. Also true. Over here, we have Porter. Uh, let's see here, does it say what Porter? over here. So in here is the harness room. These are actually the harnesses they use uh, when you do like a Disney wedding that involves a carriage. So these are all like the nice fancy harnesses. So there's like a mysterious box in the center here. Mickey's on it. Got Grady over here. And Zilly. Pop up. And you got moose. Over here you got Skylar. And here's kind of more like museum-y stuff. Uh, different pictures of the horses from throughout the years. Different models over here. And then they do have like a little video. It looks like they have an yep, animations and stuff with it. Uh, kind of talking about the different horses and stuff on property.
So again, this is the land that they cleared for that hotel that they're not doing anymore. But it's very weird. Like this used to all be wooded. And then there actually used to be a path and you could walk all the way to Wilderness Lodge. I'm pretty sure you can still kind of see it on the other end over there, kind of in between the woods. But you can like see all the way to Contemporary and it's kind of weird now. So we're walking back down the center path. When we came back to the settlement, we went kind of the long way to walk around by the dog park. Uh, now we're cutting right through the center. Uh, so we'll pass kind of the movie theater and then the uh, Meadows Trading Post and that main pool area again. Then we'll head back kind of towards the cabin area. So we're back, we're right at the trading post right behind me. I just want to point out, uh, kind of over on the far end over there, that is the like movie area and they uh, do like a little show and stuff. Uh, also where they do like marshmallow roasting. And you can see there's also canoe rentals. So there's a couple of people out canoes. They also do bike rentals there too. Uh, looks like that area is actually hopping right now. <laughs> And then back over there is the bridge where we kind of first started recording our walk from back by the pool. And we have the gift shop right here. All right guys, so we are actually getting ready to check out now. Um, but we did two nights here, mm -hmm. and we've done the cabins before. Uh, last, since the last time, they did get a little bit of a renovation. Uh, they got some new appliances, uh, looks like new countertops, which was nice. Uh, we like the cabins, we like the extra room it gets, especially for the two of us. Big difference for us this time was we brought our dog, which was like a new experience for us and for him. Yeah. He did very well. We were very proud of him. He got lots of treats this week. Yeah, I love Fort Wilderness. Um, yeah, bringing the dog was new. We've had dogs like on campsites before, but never like in a cabin or in a Disney room. For us, it's not a cost saving measure, but he had been at the borders like when we did the wish trip very recently, so I didn't want to put him at the borders again. So we just decided to try it out and he did good. Yesterday when I was at the cabin all day, the Disney people did come by twice and like knocked on the door and like came in to do stuff and like obviously he doesn't love that. I don't know what they would have done if we weren't here and he was here. I assume they would have just knocked and then left. That made me a little nervous. Anytime that we left, we either put him in the crate. Fort Wilderness is a great place to come with a dog. Because yeah, for sure. I mean, they have a dog park. Um, yeah, there's, and there's so many dogs here, because on the campsite, I don't think there's a fee or anything. I think no. you can just bring your dog, so a lot of people do that. But yeah, we did a couple of walks around the whole resort, and it just feel it's so familiar, because it's pretty much still the same as it used to be when I was a kid, so I love it. <laughs> yeah. Of all the places you can like stay on property, I think this has still the most like classic Disney feel, classic oh, Disney yeah. atmosphere for sure. You know, it's it's still got a very like strong community around it of people who are here year after year, um, staying at campsites with people that they've you know met year after year, that sort of thing. Um, it's a very strong like classic Disney vibe if that's what you're really into if that's what maybe you're missing from yeah. the park atmosphere and right having, now. And having the kitchen and being able to cook and do, like, you could do breakfast, lunch, dinner here if you wanted, you could do breakfast and dinner. It is really nice. And this, I think, we got to actually utilize the kitchen. We More didn't. We, we didn't. Ever have. We didn't use it really when we were here because it was a race weekend. And kind of just being here does make me want to try to come do more tent camping here, which is something we enjoy when it's not super hot and rainy season. So maybe we'll try to come back and do that. Yeah, I would definitely be game. Uh, and there's so is... much stuff at the resort that we didn't even do, like the movies, fireworks on the beach. I mean, I've never done like fishing, canoeing or anything, and that's here. 
so yeah, so there's a lot of stuff you can do here. Yeah, another one of those great resorts for the uh, kind of staycation style or non-park for sure. Something new that we're actually doing in January is we're going to be renting an RV that'll be dropped off like at location. So we'll yeah. definitely do a video about that, uh, kind of follow up on that experience. And that'll be interesting too because that'll be a race weekend, so lots yeah. of new things. Uh, but we have, we've stayed in these cabins for race weekends. We've also tent camped for race weekends. Uh, yeah. Both have been decent, though I would say the cabin experience the cabin is, is preferred for that. The cabin is fabulous for a race weekend because you have lots of room, you have a kitchen. Depending on how you are as a racer, you can control your food and what you're eating and what your stomach holds on to. The camping is fun for race weekends, If I would say if you're not stressed about the race weekend because you potentially would have the rain and the noise and heat or cold. You have some more variables. Yeah. I think RV, different, but tent. Yeah. <laughs> a couple cons about the cabin. Uh, it is in need of some modernization. I don't think it needs to be completely renovated. It's got kind of that timey cabin look, and I'm totally all for that. Could use new furniture. Yeah, which... could use new furniture, and like, there's no USB ports yet. And there's also some like weird layout things, like the TV in the back room really could use to be wall mounted. Uh, that closet back there is just like a curtain. I think just that whole like vanity TV area there could be switched out. Like even just make it one big long like dresser style with a big TV mm -hmm. would be nice. Like the TV in the front room is a nicer, newer TV. Uh, that is it's greatly huge. appreciated. Yeah. Uh, but then when you open one of the drawers down there, the cords and all the boxes are just like shoved in there. And I feel like that could very easily, like there's space behind that wall there that that could have gone in uh, yeah. just to kind of hide and clean it up. Um, I think they could probably put in there somewhere maybe a pull down bed instead of the couch. Yeah. Begs the couch bed is very no bueno. It's uh. older. <laughs> it's uh, quite frankly uncomfortable. We pulled it out just to like give it a test. Uh, I would not want to sleep on it. Yeah. And it's very dim lighting and because we're surrounded by really tall trees you don't get a lot of natural light coming in so like doing my makeup there was no good light to do that yeah, I guess even in the bathroom there's Me. not like a mirror light no so I think all the I kept looking around thinking that there had to be some kind of ceiling light that I was missing because it was so dark it's all lamps and, and stuff like that but not huge gripes but like whenever they go to remodel these I think that's stuff that they probably will fix yeah, for sure. You know, this is definitely very much more of like cabin style than, you know, some sort of luxury accommodation, yeah. you know. You're getting similar room to like, you know, a one bedroom or something like that, uh, but you're not getting all of those accommodations. For us, the atmosphere um, and just being at Fort Wilderness is really what makes that for us overall. That is our review of the cabins at Fort Wilderness Resort. Uh, like I said, we will be back in January doing an RV camping here. Mm -hmm. Potentially, maybe we'll try to sneak in some tent camp camping for like a little weekend trip. That would be very nice. We both enjoyed that. Yeah. Yes, we love <laughs> Fort Wilderness. One thing we didn't really do this time because we did a lot of cooking in the room. We didn't do the food, but Hoop Did You Review is back. That's came back this summer. Yeah. Uh, that is a big plus to the resort, big I did, draw for people. I did look for Hoop Did You Review while we were here and I don't think any of the I think it's been sold out yeah. like since reservations We'll keep open. trying yeah. for the next We'd few We'd definitely times we like come. to yeah. try that one of these times. I've never done it so I'd, that'd be fun. I have. It's been a very long time though. Yeah. Uh, Trails End we've always thought yeah. very positive of. I believe that is back to a buffet style as well which is probably a plus for it. The family style I think wasn't quite doing it for us there uh, but we still like that. Uh, quick service here is a little bit of a weird situation. Uh, we showed you earlier they do have like food trucks and stuff which is cool. We didn't experience that um, but we do know the one that they do, the one barbecue one has been always pretty solid for us. The chuck wagon, that's yep. what it's called. Yeah we've done that throughout the years a few times and that's usually been good. You said there was a cupcake one that we saw today, and then you said there was a soft serve one. There was that you a soft saw. serve one. I didn't see it when we were doing our walk earlier, but okay. So they're bringing stuff in and out, which is that's new. Oh, and they thing. do a food truck rally Tuesdays and Wednesdays now. Yeah, so that would be interesting to something cool if you're see. staying the week, do something yeah. different. 
yeah, or in between Hoopty Doo and Trails End, they do have, it's not really a quick service, it's like a takeaway, but the food I've gotten from there has always been good. Yeah, it's basically a lot of the Trails End options uh, that are kind of made into like to-go style meals for you. Yeah, so it's a, that's a, a good thing. I mean, they're really assuming that people camping here are going to be doing like camping food, cooking in yep. the cabins, cooking in the RV, so they don't offer quite as much as a traditional resort. Yeah, but still good options though. We enjoy it. Also, you're a boat ride away from contemporary wilderness. We couldn't recommend Geyser Point high enough. Oh like, yeah. We love Geyser Point yep. over there. And then you have Steakhouse 71 and the whole monorail loop as well. Yep. Like, pretty Holly. easy access. Yeah. Lots of good stuff. I think that about does it for our review of the cabins in Fort Wilderness. I know a couple run Disney trips we've stayed here. Uh, so we do have some other content on Fort Wilderness. I'll see if I can try to link some of that below. But thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, all of that fun YouTube-y stuff. And we'll see you next time. Bye.